The fibula artery arises as the largest branch of the posterior tibial artery. It supplies the, the lateral compartment of the leg, which is a fascial compartment containing these two muscles, fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. It also supplies the deep muscles of the posterior compartment, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and tibialis posterior, as well as the soleus muscle, which is considered one of the superficial muscles of the posterior compartment. Let's make the soleus transparent now so that we can see the path of the fibula artery. So we know that, that it's related closely to the lateral and posterior compartments. And just to drill that in a bit further, let's have a look at this image here. So this is a coronal, coronal cut of the leg. Here is the, the fibular artery and here is the posterior tibial artery. In our model, this is the fibula and this is the posterior tibial. This is tibialis posterior here in purple, which is here in our model. And this is soleus, which we've made transparent. So in our model, I'm just going to highlight flexor hallucis longus for you. We can't see it in this image, right? As the cut is made around this level, at which point the fibular artery runs between tibialis posterior and soleus just here. Now highlighted in orange over here is the lateral compartment, this being fibularis longus, which is here in our model. So these two muscles, fibularis longus, as well as fibularis brevis, are both supplied by the muscular branches of the fibular artery which penetrate and supply muscles in the posterior and lateral compartments of the leg. The next branch we'll talk about is the nutrient artery, which departs the fibular artery around here to pierce the middle third of the fibula bone, supplying the tissue of the bone. We then have what we call the perforating arteries or the perforating branches. There are up to seven of these, along the entire length of the, the fibular artery, but we only really talk about the largest one, which pierces through the interosseous membrane. Going around to the anterior aspect now, so that we can make that out a bit more clearly, the largest perforating branch perforates the interosseous membrane and enters the anterior compartment of the leg. It anastomoses with the anterior medial malleolar branch of the anterior tibial artery. The next branch from the fibula is the posterior lateral malleolar branch, just here. Supplying the inferior tibiofibula syndesmosis joint and also anastomosing with the anterior lateral malleolar artery. Around the back here, this is the communicating branch departing from the fibula, which actually anastomoses with another communicating branch, which comes from the posterior tibial artery. And the last branch of the fibular artery, that is the terminal branch, the calcaneal branch of the fibular artery, which forms a bit of a network with the calcaneal branch that comes from the posterior tibial artery, supplying the calcaneum and the skin of the posterior heel. So there we have it, fibular artery supplying part of the posterior compartment and all of the lateral compartment of the leg, as well as some of the ankle joint and the calcaneum. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe and we'll see you next time.